What's up, guys? This is Webby back again for your Monday Night Raw review. One night off of Extreme Rules. We are on our way to SummerSlam, the official build towards SummerSlam. First off, thank you for tuning in. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much. And if you're not, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit that bell for all notifications. It is much appreciated by me and everybody who helps make this channel what it is today and throughout the last two years that it has been on YouTube. Go and watch anything that you've missed this past week. Raw and SmackDown live reviews from last week. My 1994 SummerSlam review. My huge preview and predictions of Extreme Rules. My review of Extreme Rules amongst everything else. That would be much appreciated. It's live on the channel right now. Now, Raw tonight. Do we really have... Any reason to be upset? Do we really have any reason to gripe, moan, groan, and complain? Some of you wrestling fans would say, yes, we do. Some of you wrestling fans would say, absolutely, positively, we have every reason in the world to moan and groan, gripe, complain till the cow comes home until Brock Lesnar drops that Universal Championship at SummerSlam. But in reality, let's let let's let's think about this. We really don't have any reason to complain. None. Because we all, each and every one of us, knew this was coming. We knew WWE was going to pull the trigger and do this. We didn't know how it was going to end up this way. But we knew that Brock Lesnar... More than likely wasn't going to show up tonight, number one. It was just going to be Paul Heyman because of how the ultimatum was laid out. We're going to dive into that in, in, in just a minute. But we knew somehow once these two triple threat matches was laid out and how they were laid out, Roman Reigns was going to go one-on-one -on -one with Bobby Lashley next week. And of course, I think everybody knows that since Bobby Lashley beat Roman Reigns at Extreme Rules, and everybody in WWE is shoving continuously this this Roman agenda about the greatest Royal Rumble of all time match and about how Roman Reigns has been seething at Brock Lesnar for that Universal Championship. He's going to win next week. And Bobby Lashley will not win when it counts. Do we have any reason to complain? WWE was going to go down this. We all knew it. Plus, plus, last night on the Extreme Rules uh, 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 uh review show thing that they have right after the show, whatever WWE calls it on the network. Bobby Lashley said that he wants the Universal Championship. He wants a piece of Brock Lesnar. He wants this. He wants that. And then he also stated, which you can see it on YouTube, that 
He wants the Universal Championship, but he doesn't care if he comes after that. He gets that if Roman Reigns gets it first. So, just by him saying that, we know Roman Reigns is going to face Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. So, everybody who is out there and is upset and is about to go on YouTube or Twitter or 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 Facebook or whatever social media website, I know I made a couple comments on there, but whoever's going to go on there and, and start ranting and raving and, and, and scorching all over, there's really no point because this was the direction in some form or fashion we knew WWE was going to end up. They might have been trying to spin it a, a different way to try to fool us, but we're not dumb. And what's going to end up happening is tomorrow, next, not tomorrow, next week on Raw, that crowd hopefully eats that match alive. What should have happened, what should have happened, and I tweeted it out. You can go to my Twitter at 2007 Webby. I tweeted it out. Rollins wins that triple threat match. He goes to the Raw next week. He wins the match and beats Roman Reigns and faces Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. Now, by doing that, wrestling fans, I think we all are in agreement. Now, whether Rollins would beat Brock Lesnar or not, if he would beat Brock Lesnar and the show would go off the air with him swirling the championship all around, that would be great. If Braun Strowman would cash in, fans would probably still be happy. Instead, with the situation that they have now, they backed themselves into a, uh, a, a situation where Braun Strowman has to cash in. The fans are going to eat the match alive. The fans don't care about the championship matchup. And, and, and all this, this halfway booing, cheering Brock Lesnar garbage that they're feeding us uh, uh, with Paul Heyman and, and, and us, him not caring about the WWE Universe and only caring about UFC and all this jazz. It's just going to backfire the closer we get to SummerSlam. So, for those of you that are going to go on social media and start ripping this to shred, there is no sense in it. Because we knew WWE was going to go in this direction. Seriously. And it's garbage. Okay? I'm feeling you. I agree. It's garbage. But whatever. What else did we see on Raw tonight? Besides the whole Brock Lesnar, Paul Heyman, triple threat matchup stuff where uh, Paul Heyman finally decided to uh, 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 agree that Brock Lesnar would uh, defend his WWE Universal Championship at SummerSlam. Besides all that, which we knew that was going to happen. And I just laid out everything that happened. We did see those two triple threat matches. And uh, uh, the opening contest was a very good matchup, regardless of who won. Because I know everybody really did not like Roman Reigns winning that matchup, regardless of who won. It was a really good contest between Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre, and Finn Bauer. Drew McIntyre, when he 
flew through the air over the top rope onto the outside and hit Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns took that entire fall, that entire bump. I'm telling you, it looked like Finn Bauer said, forget this, I'm getting out of the way. That was a great spot. I'm going to tell you that much. But, you know, it was a really good contest. We knew what was going to happen, though. Roman Reigns victorious. Couldn't complain about Great spots all over it for a triple threat matchup. They did get a weapon involved in it as well. I was kind of surprised at that. WWE doesn't usually get weapons involved in matches that much anymore unless it's going through a table or something like that. They got still chair involved. So uh, I, I was uh, surprised but happy that they actually did that during just a regular triple threat contest. So in the end, Roman Reigns victorious. With the spear onto Finn Balor, which we all knew that's the only reason why he was in this matchup anyway. What else did we see tonight on Monday Night Raw? Dolph Ziggler came out, and of course, he was bragging on himself about being the Iron Man and Intercontinental Champion. And all of a sudden, we saw glorious. Bobby Roode. And Bobby Roode wanted to challenge Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship. Bobby Roode interrupted Dolph Ziggler saying that uh, the one person he had not thanked was Drew McIntyre for him keeping the IC strap. Well, you know, the pairing... It is slowly but surely, I do believe, about to end between Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. But Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode. Now, I get it. This is a filler matchup. But you choose Bobby Roode out of everybody? What has Bobby Roode done? To deserve an Intercontinental Championship matchup. Thankfully, this was not an IC Championship strap match. <sighs> because if it was, I think everybody would say that uh, they were happy Bobby Roode got something like this. But... Bobby Roode has been very underutilized, not been, you know, given anything of any importance to prove to us since he's been on the main roster that he deserves an Intercontinental Championship matchup. Congo line dancing with No Way Jose. You know, Losing every week, being on the main event, doesn't really deserve an IC strap match, in my eyes. One thing that I know people are interested in, and WWE continues to uh, 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 just make it disintegrate and suck, is the Sasha Banks and Bailey situation. We went from them tearing each other apart one week backstage, throwing each other in the tables and two lockers, amongst other things, to them being in Dr. Shelby's office counseling, being in a different therapist counseling, being in a tag team where the tag team match goes nowhere, to Sasha Banks saying tonight that she loves Bailey, that she wants this, that she loves this, she loves all this stuff about Bailey, and then walks off. They are treating this rivalry like trash. I'm just going to say that. These... Competitors should have a great backstory, beating each other up, 
plus with promos going into SummerSlam where they have an epic contest for us. Not tag team matches, Kurt Angle. No, they don't need to be friends. Now, the one thing I do think is a, a change of scenery would be good for one of them. But before we get to that, seeing as how he mentioned one of them going to SmackDown Live, a change of scenery trade would be good uh, for one of them. In which, if that happens, I think maybe a Charlotte or someone like that would come over to a, a, a Raw. But if that's the case, or maybe even Asuka comes over to the Raw. I don't know. One of them. If uh, Bailey or Sasha goes to SmackDown. But if that's the case, they need to have a good contest at SummerSlam first. And stop with this really bad storytelling between these two. How can you mess up this rivalry? Really, how can you mess up Bailey and Sasha Banks? This rivalry laid out. It was perfectly laid out for you. And you turned it into a team hell no rivalry. We complained about that. So you yanked that. I guarantee that was probably part of the reason. So you yanked that part of the storyline. You team them back up. And now you're yanking the tag team thing and threatening to move one of them over the SmackDown. What in the world are you doing, WWE? Give me a break here. You can do so much better with these two superstars. Y'all let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. The B team versus the Ascension. B team victorious. B team will face the leader of worlds. Yes. Next week. We're a tag team championship. Rematch. B team will be victorious. The Cinderella story will continue, I believe, till we get to SummerSlam, where they will eventually drop those titles at SummerSlam. AOP versus Titus Worldwide. Yeah. Okay. AOP wins. I do not care. Ember Moon versus Sarah Logan. This is what I'm going to say about this. It's nice for the WWE to give Sarah Logan a match for once. It's nice for WWE to uh, give the Riot Squad a victory for once with Ruby Riot not there. You know, because, uh, you know, usually it's uh, the Riot Squad losing and the Riot Squad uh, uh, beating them up. The, competitors up afterwards it's nice seeing uh, uh the right squad picking up a victory for once i'm, I'm just going to say that so ember moon loses uh, it doesn't really affect her whatsoever one loss doesn't and i, I was really kind of surprised that it was a uh, uh, sarah logan that uh, got the victory honestly i figured they would have a uh, Liv morgan pick up uh, a victory over uh, Amber Moon instead. But Sarah Logan gets the victory. And honestly, her body of work, as far as inside the squared circle, is much bigger, better than Liv Morgan. Anyway, so I think Sarah Logan deserves that one, two, three victory over Amber Moon. Mojo Raleigh versus Tyler Breeze. Now... The coach stated that <laughs> I do believe it was the coach. It was the coach. It was one of them. It was one of the announcers. <sighs> you know, the announce team is so bad. 
these days. They stated, I believe it was a coach, they stated that it's one thing to do this kind of damage to a cheeseburger and another to Tyler Breeze. But this is Tyler Breeze. Now, wrestling fans, I'm a fan of Tyler Breeze. I'm a fan of Breezango. I wish they would do more with Breezango, put them on TV more. But let's be honest here. Mojo Raleigh beating Tyler Breeze didn't do one thing for Mojo Raleigh. Anything Mojo Raleigh does on Monday Night Raw will do nothing because the fans will not embrace him. Right? I think we're all in agreement with that. Nobody cares about Mojo Raleigh, no matter how much the mighty Vincent uh, Kennedy McMahon wants to give him this little mid card push on Raw. It's not going to work. And you want to know the truth? That was it as far as uh, uh, Monday Night Raw is concerned. Outside of uh, Alexa Bliss segment, which, you know, Ronda Rousey's still suspended, even though she shows up on Monday Night Raw. And I want to point this out. Where was the security guards? You know, I thought she, I thought they were going to treat Ronda Rousey just like everybody else else in the WWE. And you know, I hate looking at it this way, and I know a lot of fans aren't going to look at it this way, but that's okay. I'm going to point this out. Ronda Rousey, if she's going to get treated like, just, just like everybody else, and she's suspended, anybody else that's suspended, if you go back and look in the past, when they've come out on Raw and they try to go inside the squared circle and go after whoever they're in rivalry with, what's always happened? Security guards, referees, instantly. Ronda Rousey comes out. Do we see that? Absolutely not. We see Ronda Rousey rip. Mickey James to shreds with whatever that move's called that she does. It's kind of like a twist, uh, a Samoa drop type move. Or that uh, arm bar that she uh, tried to put on uh, uh, Mickey James. And then she tried to rip Alexa Bliss to shreds tonight. Where was the security guards? I'm taking nothing away from uh, uh, how the segment came off with, you know, what she did and uh, how they're trying to build this up with how much Ronda Rousey just wants a piece of Alexa Bliss because of last night and how and, and uh, Alexa Bliss beating uh, uh, Ronda Rousey with the uh, kendo stick. But. Come on. She said herself, she wants to get treated just like everybody else. Well, if she wants to get treated just like everybody else, WWE, you need to write storylines just like you do everybody else. Fans, whether it's a minority or a majority, are not blinded by that. We remember things from the past. Okay, so give me a break here. But taking nothing away from that segment, I thought it did come off great that uh, Ronda Rousey tried to rip everybody apart. And uh, she got another week's sus suspension. But really, this does just prove to you one thing. 
that WWE, you know, it would have done a great deal if they have taken Ronda Rousey and literally not mentioned her for an entire month. Not mentioned her. Maybe shown the clip of what happened once. Do that. But it seemed like each week throughout this entire suspension, we heard Ronda Rousey. We saw Ronda Rousey in some form or fashion. She was never really suspended. That's the way it came off to me. So with, and I get it, you're planting more seeds for the SummerSlam match. But even, so with WWE doing that, to me, it makes her still not as special. That could have been such a louder, bigger pop. If she was taken off TV and no one had heard her name at all. Could have. That's what I noticed tonight. But you all let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to do everything I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast. And tune in tomorrow for my SmackDown Live review where Jeff Hardy takes on Shinsuke Nakamura for the United States Championship. Should be a great matchup. And until I see you then, this is Webby, and I'll catch you on the other side. Talk to you later.